Oh my god, my neighbor has been idling his car for like an hour, and I'm not exaggerating. He has this huge truck, and it's right by my window, and he does this every time he physically leaves the house. He has to idle his car from anywhere between 45 minutes to two hours, I'm not exaggerating, before this man leaves the house. I... Uh... Hey guys, my name is Lacey of Spooky Lips and Fat Hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm excited. I'm always excited. I'm just an excitable person. But today, I'm specifically excited because I'm going to be doing my first monthly favorites video. And I know that in YouTube land, I'm doing this very late. I'm currently filming on the 10th of February for the month of January. But I'm like halfway through the month. I don't know. We're rolling with it. These are all of my January favorites. I'm going to be talking about makeup. I'm also going to be talking about some like lifestyle-y fun things that I was into in January. I'm also going to be throwing some empties in at the end because I never really accumulate enough empties to do like a dedicated empties video. But I've gone through a couple products in the last like month or two that I figured were worth throwing in here and giving my thoughts on. This video is probably going to be a million years long. So let's get into it. January has kind of been the month of how can I still look this ridiculous but get out the door in half the time. I just started the semester. I'm very grateful to be in my very last semester of my undergraduate career. I got the email like a couple days ago that my graduation application was approved. So I'm so excited for that. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I have like lab very early this semester. I don't know why I did that to myself, but I am not a person that likes to not put full beat on leaving the house and I, it has nothing to do with like confidence or stuff. So don't come at me with the whole like, you don't have to wear makeup. Cause like, no, I don't wear makeup. I wear, I just feel like my, this is, when I look in the mirror looking like this, I to me look like lazy. I feel like myself. I feel the most happy, most comfortable. All that being said, so many of my favorite products from January have been the products that have helped me achieve this level of ridiculous swamp witch glamour in a short amount of time. <laughs> the foundation I've been reaching for most days has been the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. This is perfect because some of my school days are relatively long and this holds up so well and especially in the weird weather conditions of New Jersey. New Jersey's kind of like a boggy swamp and it can be very humid despite being freezing out. It's windy, it's wet, it's been snowing. This holds up to weather and this holds up to long days at school. Also, this is probably the closest shade match ever to my real skin tone. If anyone's curious, I wear shade 120. This is amazing. I'm definitely going to repurchase this the second I'm out of it. The only thing I don't like about this is like this holds up so well throughout the day, like eight hours worth of wear, but the second it starts to break down, it breaks down hard and you feel disgusting and like you need to get off your face. Like it's like, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh my God, get it off. So that's my only complaint about this foundation. Besides that, I recommend this to anyone that's looking for something that'll hold up through work days, through long school days, through weather, through sweat, through humidity, through oil. This is mattifying, but I don't feel like I look horrific, but that might be because I go banana sandwich with my setting spray. I don't know. The absolute next thing that I can't live without in January or ever, this is like a holy grail product for me, is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette. I normally don't like contour palettes because I feel like you only ever, like for example, this is the side that correctly works for my skin tone. So all of this would be a waste, right? The reason why this one is my favorite besides like being a good formula and being appropriate for my skin tone stuff is that Kat Von D made these refillable so once I hit pan on any of these I can just instead of buying a whole new palette for however much I can just buy the more affordable single pan which I think is amazing. Plus one of my favorite things to do when I'm trying to get the door really quickly is use all of these shades in the crease and just put something very metallic on the lid and get out the door. Still like high impact look with minimal effort. So this is forever going to be my favorite contouring collection, makeup, palette, whatever of life. I own an excessive blush collection. I have no idea why, to be perfectly honest, but all of this month I have been reaching for all of my blushes from The Balm. I love The Balm. They have some of the cutest packaging in the world. It sucks me in every time. They were also one of my very first high-end brands. I used to work at Kohl's 
Fun fact, I worked in the shoe department of Kohl's for a very long time. That's actually where I met my boyfriend like a decade ago. <laughs> oh, happy Valentine's Day. Specifically, I like I have these four. Hot Mama, I love. It's a pretty good dupe, in my opinion, for Orgasm by NARS. It's like a red with the golden shift to it. But all these other ones, Cabana Boy, Down Boy, Frat Boy, which the names are adorable. These are relatively cool tone. I've been doing a lot of cool tone looks recently this month. I feel like these all kind of look the same, holding them up on camera. But they're all pretty cool tone or pretty neutral at the very least. And I've been doing a lot of purple looks and a lot of like red looks and cool tone brown looks and taupey looks. So I just feel like these go very well for cool tone looks. And I really just love the texture of these. I feel like they're buildable but also sheer enough that it's like built in protection against overdoing it with your blush which I tend to do a lot so formula wise I feel like these are some of the best blushes I own sticking with complexion products I have two highlighter formulas I want to talk about that I've been going hard for in January mostly because I want to look so shiny and glossy and ridiculous I get I feel like because when I I don't, not even that I ever do minimal makeup, but I feel like when I go more minimal on my eyes, I make up for it with a lot of highlighter. I don't know if that's good or bad. First highlighter I want to talk about is this Wet n Wild highlighter called Boozy Brunch. This highlighter is spectacular. And everyone talks about the Mega Glow Wet n Wild highlighters, which are five bucks a piece, which I also love. They would have been in my 2017 favorites if that video survived. But this blush specifically is a baked formula and I'm so into baked blushes because they're such high impact glossiness without being glittery. Glittery? They're very high impact without having a lot of glitter. This one also is like a very wearable gold for me. I don't know how well you guys can see it but most gold highlighters tend to be too yellowy and streaky and dark for my skin tone because I am translucent. This one blends out very nicely. It doesn't have too strong of a base color. Just has like a nice gold sheen that I feel like it's very wearable and if you did have a darker skin tone you could easily just pull this off the even better. If you want a glossy highlight though you gotta go for the Ofra highlighters. Well I will admit their packaging sucks. These are some of the most spectacular not subtle highlighters in the world. Mostly I've been reaching for Rodeo Drive in the last month but I just got my hands on Pillow Talk which is their newest addition to this line which is a nice pink. These are the best highlighters ever. Oh my god. Again with golds you would think this would be too dark but I feel like this blends out so beautifully and this pink is even more spectacular for my skin tone. It looks so seamless and so just like it was made for me, but I also, again, like the Wet Model Highlighter, don't think that it's exclusive to fair skin tones. I think if you had a deeper skin tone with either of these, it's still going to look good. Because like the Wet n Wild Highlighter, I don't know if these are baked or not, I just feel like this formula is so perfected because like the Wet n Wild Highlighter, it doesn't have too strong of a base color. It's just a nice sheen, a nice reflective shine. I feel like sometimes highlighters can have almost too much pigment. So yeah, it's gold, but now you just have a streak of gold that doesn't blend out nicely. These blend out nicely, and the second you hit these with setting spray, they just melt into your skin, and they just look so magazine editorially perfect. If you're into a blinding shine, if you're into that natural kind of like healthy glow, stay away from these because you're going to look ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sure nobody is shocked, but my baby, since I've gotten it, has been my sugar pill eyeshadow collection. I love you so much. It is so hard for me to do my eyeshadow without these. Even if I'm only reaching for one color because even if I'm like doing like I said a purple look I'll just want like poison plum out of this palette because I just want to amp up my palette. Like this palette any one of these colors just takes any other eye look that you're normally doing to the next extreme level. These are so pigmented and so perfect that they've ruined all other eyeshadows for me for the rest of my life. I will forever be comparing all other eyeshadows in existence to the Sugar Pill Pro eyeshadow pans because these are perfection. They're perfect, they're amazing. They've stained some of my makeup brushes, but I don't care because I love them. It just, 
Uh, it was worth every penny of the $120, and I hate admitting that. Something else I've really been loving that is a little bit more on the pricey side, in my opinion, is this Art Nueva Quad from Saucebox Cosmetics. There is something about these four eyeshadows that I just love so much, and I'm not one that tends to get drawn to quads because I'd rather have more bang for my buck. I got these on sale and I recommend only getting Saucebox on sale because while I love their quality, their pricing's a little out of control. I do believe as I'm making this video, there's a 25% off site-wide coupon for them, but I'll, I'll put everything I can find in the description below. Anyway, these metallic eyeshadows to me are so perfect. This red specifically is like my dream red metallic eyeshadow. I don't know how well you guys can see or how well of a job I did, but you can also mix all four shadows together to basically get the whole spectrum of the rainbow, which I love. I also love that these are rich enough in color that I feel like they're high impact. I don't like light pastel colors. I'm a very bold eyeshadow lover, if you haven't guessed. So these really deliver for me, and I would highly recommend them, but like I said, on sale. Something I will always recommend, though, because you can't beat the price, is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. When I'm talking about trying to get out the door really quickly, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Using the Kat Von D contour palette in the crease and then throwing one of these on the lid just with a swipe of a finger. Perfect, high impact, high metallicized drag look in a matter of minutes. It's so simple and so amazing and I collected quite a number of these and I love them all but I've picked three of my favorites to share with you guys. I'm not going to swatch everything because in this video it would be nine years long. But Telepathy is one of my all time favorites. It's a very yellow based gold but it's even like less well it's kind of almost like a green yellow gold if that makes sense i love this color coconut which is just like the best blue metallic eyeshadow ever and then moonwalk which is a green red shift which is very unique and i love this one probably the most yeah i've always been into super shock shadows but especially i feel like i've rediscovered them in the last month and i just reach for them so frequently that all of my other eyeshadow palettes are sad and jealous. I've just really been into metallic eyeshadow palettes in general and more specifically all metallic eyeshadow palettes which is not characteristic of me. I'm normally very turned off by all metallic shadows but I don't know why I've been feeling more creative lately. I've been feeling more inspired lately. I've been less afraid to put shimmers in the crease and put different color combinations together. I've really been trying to be more creative than I feel like I have in the past. These are just two example palettes that I've picked. The Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette, which I surprisingly really love and I didn't have the highest expectations for it. And also, I know I just got this, but the ColourPop Golden State of Mind palette I've actually been getting way more use out of than I ever thought that I would. This Too Faced palette is actually what I'm wearing today. I don't know how well you guys can see again with lights and glasses and whatnot, but this big old yellow, this green, this pink, I love the silvers, and I know it has, I'm sorry about the lighting, I know it has like two matte shades in it, but those matte shades are kind of pointless. Using this with like a contour palette or any other matte palette you have is perfect, just I like to use these with a glitter glue, that's just me personally, you could easily just foil them like by spritzing your brush with some setting spray or something like that. Same thing goes with this ColourPop palette. I've been liking to put like interesting different colors into the inner corners and like on the lower lash line and I just feel like I'm reaching for this a lot. Like I said, way more than I thought I would in truth. I did get hard pan on one of the colors already though so that's kind of annoying but that kind of is a testament to the formula of these. They're very creamy and very wet feeling. You probably wouldn't need to wet your brush with these, but it would just make it all the more impactful. Putting these on with like a finger would easily get high shine on the lid, so ColourPop always kills it. And then my last makeup favorite of the month are the Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit Liquid Lipsticks. These have always been like a serious favorite of mine ever since they came out because I feel like they're so beyond worth the $5 price tag. These are so good that they really rival high-end formulas in my opinion. I picked three of my original favorites to mention, Give Me Mocha, Goth Topic, which is the cutest name ever, and Rebel Rose. I love these three original colors, but they also released more colors in December, and I grabbed a bunch. I grabbed Lavender Crown, The Shade is Teal, and Caramel Cake. Caramel Cake, specifically, is a almost perfect dupe for my absolute favorite lip color of all time, which is Kat Von D's Crucifix. 
Wet n Wild just does dark colors specifically really well for liquid lipsticks and that's kind of surprising to me considering high-end brands don't tend to do dark colors well and I always kind of go into putting on a dark like a dark color with the understanding that it's going to be a little more difficult to work with but Wet n Wild does a really good job with their formula and I really haven't found any of their colors that I found too hard to work with or too like streaky or anything like that. Colourpop liquid lipsticks are like six bucks and they absolutely suck. These are five dollars and they're incredibly amazing and they have a good color selection now including like more interesting ones like the shade is teal so I feel comfortable recommending them to you guys especially if you like are new to liquid lipsticks because these are so accessible and so affordable. So yeah that was it for my makeup favorites. I'm just going to talk about like things I've been really into in the last month just to top it off. First of all I've been listening to like three albums on a loop in the last two months which are Trixie Mattel's Two Birds album, Sharon Needle's Battle Axe album, which for the record, the song Battle Axe is like the greatest song ever in the world. I'm obsessed most specifically with that song, but I've been so into Sharon Needle's this month and um, ever. And then weirdly enough, I've been listening to the Nirvana Unplugged album like a lot and I don't know why, whatever. Also this month I found the greatest thing in the world, which is this like squishy stress ball. And I got it from Five Below. I don't know if other states have Five Below. Five Below is like a affordable candy toy store and everything is as the name suggests. Five dollars or lower. But yeah, I got this like stress ball which reminds me of the 90s. Like I swear to God, my <laughs> older sister had the same stress ball in the 90s. It's just like a balloon filled with sand basically. But I'm someone who really loves like fidget cubes and fidget spinners and like things that are supposed to help with like anxiety and like attention disorders and shit. So finding this has made me so happy and the fact that it's like smiley face in 90s just makes it so much better. I'm also going to talk about this because I can't talk about things I've been doing in the last month without talking about this bad boy. This is the board game that I talked about in my things I want to buy instead of makeup video. This is Betrayal at House on the Hill. This is like a $50 board game and it's worth every damn penny. This is basically a tabletop RPG game that's highly simplified. You start off exploring a house and laying down like tiles that represent different rooms. Different shenanigans happen in every room. Then eventually one of the players is revealed to be a traitor and then you're forced into like a scenario and it can be everything from like a Frankenstein scenario to the house collapsing into a void to sacrificing people to live eternally. This game is great. Literally, my sister came home to deliver some like really important life news and I was like, I'm so excited, do you want to play this board game? And we did and it was amazing. <laughs> also, I highly recommend playing spooky music in the background while you play this game so you can really get into it. Trust me, I will link my two favorite YouTube videos of spooky music below if you're interested because it's like, I don't, I don't, just trust me, if you get this game and you love board... If you love board games, think about this game. It's cheaper to buy on Amazon than it is at like Target. It's so good. Also, one last lifestyle thing. I've been really into diffusing oils this month. My favorite oils have been peppermint, orange, lemon, and lemongrass. If you have any like favorite oils or favorite oil blends, please leave them for me down below because I'm so into it and I just love how it feels when you walk into a room and it smells really good and it's very comforting and I'm just like uh, I'm not really into it for like medicinal purposes like cure an earache like I don't know personally you would think me being like a spooky witch I would be I'm more into it for like the comfort and the joy and the happiness and the relaxation so if you diffuse oils like I said talk to me about it down below and then finally I'm just going to talk about the things that I've used up in the last month because there surprisingly has been a few things and normally I don't tend to finish a lot of makeup just because I own so much of it, which I understand is a problem. Moving on. <laughs> this took me forever to finish. This is the NYC Smooth Skin Loose Face Powder. They don't even sell this at Target anymore. They haven't sold NYC at Target in like forever. Not to mention, I'm cruelty free now and this is not cruelty free so that's why I especially worked really hard to use this up in the last like couple months because I have a whole drawer of loose powders that I need to get through. But I love loose powders. I bake my face every day. If you guys have a good, affordable, cruelty-free loose powder suggestion for baking, 
leave it down below. I've been thinking about getting the Makeup Revolution Ghost Powder. If anyone's used it and you have feelings about it, talk to me about it. I've also finished two eyeliners this month. I finished a Kat Von D Trooper eyeliner and a Physician's Formula Eye Booster Pen eyeliner. I vi like virtually see no difference in either of these two eyeliners except for that the Physician's Formula one is more affordable. I like this Kat Von D eyeliner and it lasted me a really good amount of time. Like I do this much eyeliner on a daily basis and this held out for months and months. I just feel like because I can get this one for less money that this is the winner and this is like my holy grail because of that. I actually saw that this was clearance on Ulta and I panicked thinking that they were discontinuing it and like went to my local Ulta and bought like the last couple that were hanging on the shelf for the clearance price only to realize that they're just repackaging this eye booster one. So now I got like a bunch of backups of it, which is cool. But yeah, if anyone's ever wondering, this is my favorite eyeliner. This is what I use every single day. I love it. It's a bristle tip. It's very black. It's a matte black. It's perfect. Again, I use this every single day to this extensive craziness, and this lasts for months too. So for like a drugstore eyeliner, all of Physician Formula's prices are a little high, but this to me is worth every damn dime. That was a mouthful. Plus, Ulta so often does like buy one get one half off physician's formula, so that's the time to buy it if you're looking. I lost the cap for the spoolie, but I also used an e.l.f. brow pencil. I used the brow pencil on taupe. This is my favorite eye brow pencil of life. I basically kind of loosely fill in my eyebrows with this and then go over it with the ABH pomade, but pomade? Dip brow, dip brow. But if I don't feel like doing dip brow, I will just completely fill in my eyebrows with this and I love it. I have a drawer of like 8 million of these and I will always repurchase them because they're like 2 bucks. And again, even more worth it when e.l.f. does their 50% off site wide sale, which they do like once or twice a year. Totally worth it to stock up on these. And then finally, I finished a full size of my favorite mascara on the planet, which is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. and. Despite this being my favorite mascara of life, truly and completely I love this mascara, I refuse to buy a full size tube of this. In fact, I didn't even buy this tube, this was a gift with purchase. And that is the way I like this mascara because it is so fucking expensive. I can't justify spending over 20 bucks on a single tube of mascara when you just have to throw them out every couple months. Plus I'm someone that tends to have a little bit of eye problems if I use like anything on my skin that my skin doesn't like. I wake up with swollen eyes the next day. So I tend to get rid of eye products fairly quickly because of that. But like I said, for that reason, I hate and refuse to buy full-size high-end mascaras, but if anyone wants to buy me this mascara, just kidding, but this is my favorite mascara. I specifically, if you've never seen the wand, it has a pretty iconic wand shape that's kind of hourglass, and I find that hourglass shaped wands tend to give me the best mix of volume and clumpiness that I like so this is my absolute favorite all time. I do have like two sample sizes of it in my drawer and I much prefer using high-end mascaras in a sample size because it's just more convenient and I go through them at the same rate that I do the full size so. Alright I know this video was like an hour long but this was my monthly favorites, my empties, and just everything I've been loving in the month. Let me know what you guys have been loving in the month of January or this month or just currently whatever. Just Talk to me below. I love talking to you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!